welcome back to the Design Build video series. This week, we are here to tell you all about the Better Builders process of getting your project started right. This typically starts with someone contacting us with a project inquiry. After taking a few minutes to discuss the details, if Better Builders wouldn't be a good fit, I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. If your project may be a good fit, I'll schedule a time for you to talk with a project developer. And this is where Pete comes in. The purpose of the first call with Pete is for him to really get to know you and your project a little bit better before coming out for an in-person site visit. Pete, why would you say that this is an important step? Marin, that is a great question. Today's world, we're always busy. People are working from home, multitasking, juggling homeschooling and daycare duties. It can often be difficult to find or make time to focus on just one thing. A scheduled call gives us both the opportunity have a focused conversation about their wants and needs. This is also a great time for me to provide the client with an overview of our design and pricing process. It shows the level of detail we offer and the services we provide. The call allows both the client and better builders to determine if our process and attention to detail are right for that individual. Lastly, everyone's time is valuable. By having a simple 15 or 20 minute conversation, we can usually mutually decide there is a potential for a good fit for both parties. This saves hours in commuting and preparation for that next step, which is the site visit. So I know from experiencing some of these calls myself that we often ask some questions that people are surprised about or find a bit unusual. One of the questions we always ask potential clients is not only what they want to do, but why they want to do it. Why do you ask this question and why is the why so important? The simple word why helps open up the dialogue with our homeowner. Why can mean so many different things and allows the homeowner to open up about what it means to them. I like to sometimes add to the why question and ask them why they would want to live through a challenging home remodel. The word why helps open up a dialogue with our homeowner. Why can mean so many different things to so many different people and allows the homeowner to open up about what it means to them. What's another question that you ask that often surprises people? I'll ask them, do you love your neighbors? Do you love your neighborhood? And they often ask me why. I say, would you consider moving? I ask the question because sometimes remodeling isn't the best thing for the individual or the homeowner. Moving can sometimes be much simpler and even more cost effective to get what they need. If the homeowner loves their neighbors and their neighborhood, it makes a lot more sense for them to improve the home they live in to stay in the neighborhood that they love. So after the phone call, where do you go from there? At the end of the call, if we both feel like better builders may be the right fit for our homeowner, we'll schedule a time to go meet them in person and walk through their home. By interacting in person, we can strengthen the relationship on both sides. And then we can also start to draw a connection between the desires of the client and past projects that we have performed that might be similar to theirs. I can show them budgets and drawings, before and after photos. All of this allows me to establish a relationship and ultimately trust with the homeowner. Like we just saw in the graphic, there are four basic routes that we can go at the end of a site visit. If you and the homeowner conclude that now just isn't the right time for their project, what are some indicators that the time isn't right? Sometimes it can be just that, the timing isn't right. More often than not, usually it's budget that determines whether it's the right fit or not. People don't know what things cost, maybe have an unrealistic idea of timeline. Uh, they're not sure how long a duration of a project should take. Most people don't know it takes 12 weeks to perform a full bathroom renovation. Oftentimes they've reached out to better builders because they have a life event coming, a new baby, maybe uh, an older parent moving in with them. They have a few weeks to get their home ready for this new arrival and our timing just does not fit. So what if the homeowner concludes that they need more information? Well, we'll need to determine what type of information they need. Uh, it can often be uh, several different things. It can be, is their project even feasible? Meaning, 
Do they have enough land? Is it too close to the property line? Um, is it feasible based on uh, budget? Sometimes if they feel like they're moving in the right direction, they just need to solidify that they're making a good decision. They'll request to speak with some of our past clients. At this juncture, I usually take our reference list and highlight on there maybe two or three different clients that had lived through similar size projects to theirs. So how do you determine that the next best step is you're ready to start your project, but you don't need a designer? There are usually two scenarios that would deem that we don't need a designer. The first would be that the client already has a designer or plans for their project that they called Better Builders about. The other would be that the project is small enough that we don't need to go through full design or architecture. Even if it's a small project, we'll still need to put a basic floor plan or elevations together to know that we're executing exactly what the homeowner wants. You know what they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And the final path is that the homeowner is ready to pursue the project and they just need some assistance with design. Why is it a good idea to use a professional designer or architect? Marin, I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation over the phone when someone's trying to describe to you what something looks like and you're going back and forth and you're trying to repeat to them uh, what they're, what you think they're trying to tell you, uh, but you're never really both on the same page. Designers and architects know how to narrow the focus can gather all the information that the homeowner has provided, and presented it in a very organized way, connecting all the different pieces of information provided and developing a plan that has a continuity. As a builder, the reason I like to be involved in the process is it allows us to develop an exact price for the project based on the final design and all the selections of products. It can often be overwhelming making all these decisions on average, our homeowners will need to make between 80 and 120 decisions for their kitchen or bathroom renovation. It can be quite overwhelming with all the options out there. All the shiny things, all the bells and whistles at the showrooms, sensory overload. Designers and architects know how to narrow the focus and make this an enjoyable experience. Speaking of your design options, what's the difference between an interior designer and an architect? There are more similarities between an architect and designer than there are differences. If we're working within the confines of the existing home, an interior designer is often a more economical approach for spatial planning. If the scope is greater than the existing four walls of the home, oftentimes we'll get an architect involved. The architect is really well versed at dealing with the municipalities and the permitting, uh, the structural engineers with all the structural details to go into an addition uh, or an, the addition of a second story to a home. This is really where the difference is drawn between an interior designer, spatial planner, or an architect. Now, in our next video, we're gonna be talking a little bit more in depth about the designer interview process with Amanda from Housewarming. But can you tell me a little bit about this process of the designer interview from your perspective? Yeah, I think that this is an opportunity uh, to gain that level of trust again with our homeowners. Uh, it allows them to see how uh, me, Pete, as the representative of Better Builders, uh, communicates with our design team um, and, and what they can expect throughout the construction process. It uh, gives them an idea to look at the designer's body of work, um, get a feel for their personality and communication style. You know. As we spoke about earlier um, in some of our other videos about the number of decisions that are going to need to be made, these decisions are made over hours of time spent together. And it's important that we enjoy the people that we're spending time with. It's really the importance of uh, this designer interview. All designers and architects have a personal style or flair of their own, but they're all trained to pull on the inspiration that the homeowners provided and offer constructive criticism and feedback on the direction of the design. What if the homeowner already has a designer that they are working with? I think it's great. It shows an initiative on the homeowner's part to engage, shows that they're serious about their project. 
I would just encourage them to get their contractor involved early in the design. We've encountered some unfortunate examples of where the design was fully executed and then they got their contractor involved. They put pricing to the full design and there were some instances where it was nearly double what they had estimated the cost of the project to be. As the contractor, we typically have a really good pulse of what these projects cost and can offer our guidance and our professional experience along this design process. Moral of the story, whoever your contractor is, get them involved in the design early. In regard to the overall cost of a project and setting a realistic budget, how does Better Builders compare to other contractors? There's a lot of different kinds of contractors out there. There's the one man show, doing work for the wage, but not to be profitable business. They'll usually be cheaper, but our homeowners have to make sacrifices. Often those sacrifices deal with timeline and knowing exactly what the cost for the project's going to be. A lot of these contractors are good craftsmen and still do a good job, but the project may cost double or take twice as long. A company like ours has a deep support system. We have systems and processes. We know exactly what the design and the cost for your project is going to be before we ever start. We sign you a very specific project manager who writes a schedule, who's your first point of contact, and ensures that your project is completed on time and on budget. These are the things that set Better Builders apart from that one-man operation. In terms of paying for these projects, what are some of the common financing options that these homeowners have? Yep, most of our clientele comes to us with cash and they're even financing their project through the sale of stock or savings accounts. But there's other options out there. A lot of our local banks do a really good job with this. There's construction loans, there's home equity lines of credit, and there's cash out refinances. We have good relationships with a lot of the banks, the mortgage companies, and we can often suggest honest people that will give good feedback to our homeowners uh, in dealing with these financing options. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, and join us next week to learn all about the designer interview process.